Gentlemen, it's me, Jim Kincaid. Today we're going to compare the Leatherman P2 with the brand new ARC. And I have not been able to test the ARC in a work environment yet. I uh, am going to focus the attention of today's video primarily on the sheaths or the holsters, whatever you want to call them. Leatherman calls them sheaths between the P2 and the ARC, okay? Because, uh, well, <sighs> I have some problems with, with the ARC sheath, all right? Uh, and it has a lot to do with my philosophy of use of my, my multi-tools. Uh, like, I'll just repeat my philosophy of use, to borrow a nut and fancy term, and that is my, the pliers I want to be open by one hand. This is the recently retired OHT. Leatherman stopped selling it, but you can, you can flick it open. And you know, right now it, it needs to be uh, lubricated. I use hydraulic oil. But let me, let me bring my arm around to this side of the camera. As you can see how you flick it open like you'd flick all of uh, your dip to one side of the tin. And this is, this is great. I, I really like the one-handed opening. This is Leatherman beating Gerber at their own game. Gerber, I don't know what happened, but sometime in the early 2000s, their, their mass production went up and their quality went down because of that. But the OHT, I always, I love this, you know, flicking it open with one hand because when I need to use the pliers, you know, usually my other hand is occupied on a hydraulic hose or something. Can't, can't like go, go uh, reach in to grab my little uh, multi-tool and pry it apart with both hands and, you know, work on whatever I need to work on. And a lot of the Leathermen are like that. You really need two hands to open them up, but the OHT was a one-hander. P2, same thing. Kind of impulse bought this at Lowe's. Pretty expensive. I remember it being around $200. And the Arc is in the same uh, design philosophy as the P2 with some other differences. I'll, I will review the features of the two Leathermen in an upcoming, these two Leathermen upcoming video. Like I said, I'm trying to focus today on just the holsters or as the sheaths as they're called by Leathermen. And so anyways, what I'm trying to say is they, they had, these tools had to be accessed quickly. Because I drive a truck, if I need a real tool and I have time to get a tool, I'm gonna to go to the toolbox of my truck and take out actual pliers if I need them, or an actual pair of dikes if I need to cut something. So these are what I'd use in a pinch, all right? So, uh, you know, I would prefer to have a, uh, you know, a pocket clip, but I just found these Leatherman pocket clips are too narrow for such a big tool and they break off. So with this Leatherman not even having the option for a pocket clip, I kind of got used to wearing a holster. And one of the problems with the OHT is that, see how it's tapered? If you store it in the holster, with putting the tapered side in first as is natural, the, the uh, pliers start to inch forward and they, they poke a hole in the holster, which was a problem. My beautiful wife actually repaired a bunch of holsters and reinforced them, excuse me, sheaths, so that, uh, you know, I could prolong the life of the OHT sheaths. But eventually it would poke a hole through that reinforcement too. And this is all a moot point now because the Leatherman's not making the OHT anymore. I have two OHTs because I, I Thought I lost this one, I bought a replacement, and then I found this one. So I have two OHTs. I, I'm, I, won't, I don't think I'll ever get rid of these, I love them. Uh, but the, P, the P2 I got, like I said, was kind of an impulse buy. And it's sheathed too, like it came, the, the one that it came with was gray, but that one, uh, that one, like I, like I, I abuse these sheaths because I wear them on my belt. I work in oil field. I roll around on the ground fixing equipment, and they get really dirty. 
they get torn up, they fall apart, and that's what happened to the factory sheath for the P2. So this is a replacement one. But in terms of the philosophy of being a quick draw for your uh, multi-tool, which is really important to me, this sheath for the P2 is great because it's diminutive, so you put on your belt, right? And then uh, I have it at, uh, I guess it would be like the three or four o'clock position on my waist. And when you, if one hand's occupied, I need to quickly grab this, this multi-tool, just pop, pop this button, this grommet, and you have purchase on the tool to pull it out and then flick it open. And actually, I just published a video about the fuel water separator, the Caterpillar fuel water separator. It's a short and uh, it's become quite popular, but the part of the fuel water separator gets, gets stuck in the housing and I whip open the P2 and, and use the pliers to pull out the rest of the filter. And in that video, you can see how, how much of a quick draw this P2 is and it's great, great shape great ergonomics and it's broken in real well right now it's really dirty you can see all the filth in the body it needs to be cleaned that's for sure I'll make a video about how I clean these but I use hydraulic oil to condition everything okay so now let's get to the arc holster because this is the problem that I have first of all it's really thick it's really big I cut down on the size by removing the pocket clip, which, like I said, I found deficient in the Leatherman multi-tools. So I'm going holster with the arc, and all right, so just putting it back, you see the first problem. There's these, these sleeves for the, for the bits, which go on the sled, and the sled has a little tab that you can pull them out of these sleeves, these elastic sleeves, but when you reholster, excuse me, re-sheath the arc, if you put if you put it tabs down, it's it's gonna grab. See, I've only had it for a few days and already this is worn. This elastic is worn. Because you can put the sled on the front or against your body. Either way, right? And it's starting to get caught. Okay? Now, if you wanted to put it tabs up, so the hinge, the hinge would be going in first, it would be easier to get in, but it's still grabbing. So this is a problem already with the sheath, okay? And the next problem is that you, you have this grommet button. Look how much space there is right here. This was obviously designed for a larger multi-tool, right? See how there's a gap? And the question is, will the the bits or the tools slide out with this amount of gap and that's a problem because like I said I end up having to roll around on the ground a lot getting underneath equipment right and I also another problem I'm gonna have to test at work is that I lie down in the sleeper berth of my truck a lot on downtime you know I follow this rule why stand when you can sit why sit when you can lie down why lie down when you can sleep so when I get those hurry up and wait jobs when it's time to wait, I'm sleeping because you never know how long the job's going to go. You gotta, you gotta rest up when you can. But anyways, lying down on this, this is pretty thick, right? So that might be a problem, right? Laying down on the on the P2 in its holster, not so much of a big deal, right? You could kind of ignore this. We're gonna have to see what this is like sleeping on it. But again, look. See how much it's moving in there? I wish that Leatherman would have a, a uh, better fitting holster. Maybe we're gonna have to get a, uh, a grommet set and punch another hole in here so that we can have the button clip closer to the height of this multi-tool, okay? See how if, if I got a, another uh, button grommet, how this male end of the button could fit into a uh, another grommet right here. All right, 
And so these tabs on the side, these sleeves are for, I think one would be for a small flashlight and one would be for a bit extender because the arc has bits. Uh, here's the bit driver. Where is it? Right here. Okay. So you could put an extension here. I don't know whether it's ratcheting or not, but it's $25, which is kind of a lot of money for a small piece of metal. But anyways, yeah, so we might be able to modify this sheath to, to allow the cover to fit snugger. But that leads to another problem, and this is the main problem of the video, is that it sits so low in its sheath that the arc it would be, seems like it might be difficult for quick one hand uh, draw, okay? So there's not much to grab onto here. When, when it's all the way in the bottom of its sheath, the top barely protrudes from the holster. So when you're going to grab it, you're grabbing it on the uh, curved edge, and that could be a problem, okay? And just for comparison, again, this is the P2. Look how much you have to grab when you're pulling it out of the holster. Plenty of room. You can put, store it tabs down so that, and let me explain, when it's tabs down, see I have it hinge up. When you pull it, you have it set that how you'd want it for one-handed opening, okay? And with the arc holster, if it's kind of tough to put it tabs down again because it grabs that uh, elastic, but that's how you'd want to pull it out so that you could have the hinge where it's going to be when you're holding the tool, all right? So that, that's just a, a, a little gripe I've had with, with the holster uh, since I, I got this tool. And Dave, when did I get this tool? The yeah, the orc. When did it show up? Yeah, I think it, like, it finally showed up on Saturday. So, I, you know, I haven't been able to test it at work. Okay? But just wearing it around. That's one problem I've noticed. So, stay tuned because obviously I'm going to I'm going to be testing this Leatherman Arc at work. We're going to oil field, so we'll give it give it a test, and and you know uh, I'll let you know how it performs, how the quick draw is. And we'll make a tribute video for the Leatherman OHT because it has served it has served us valiantly with its quick draw and uh, this is still my favorite <clears throat> all right Leatherman free P2 still my favorite I will cover all the all the details about the free P2 versus the details of the Leatherman arc I mean, already my brother texted me asking me about the ARC. I know there's a lot of interest in it because Leatherman hyped it up a lot. And then there's like, there's this whole genre of YouTube video now where I guess that they're cutting coat hangers with the wire cutters until they fail. And then they're like, oh, look, it failed. And uh, I don't know what's going on there. But, uh... For those of you wondering, yes, there is, does appear to be a gap near the hinge of the pliers by the cutters. I don't know what that's all about. Need some more investigation. Maybe we'll do some of some trials of our own. Not much of a gap on the free P2 way down by the hinge. And the OHT is, yeah, no gap there. All right. I don't expect to cut coat hangers, but... Uh, there's a lot of videos where gentlemen are cutting coat hangers with no problem on on the free and on the surge and on all these leathermen and then they get to the arc and the cutters bust. What's the deal with that? How could they crack? I don't know. 
that deserves some further investigation. But anyways, I just wanted to talk about some grapes I've had so far with the, the sheath that comes with the Leatherman Arc. And stay tuned for more reviews of the Leatherman Arc as I use it and run it through its paces. Don't forget about all my videos pertaining to the G-Shock watches that I own, such as the GBDH2000 and the Mudman 9500, etc. I'm Jim Kincaid. Thanks for watching. Here, let's just fade out to me holding this tool. In fact, let me flick it open while we fade out. That would be a good fade out.